Ramble. Thank you to Everlane, Next Evo Naturals, and Life Straw for sponsoring today's episode. Guys, I have crazy news that I forgot about. <laughs> what? And you're going to love this especially, Zach. Oh, wow. I finally, two days ago, bought something that I've always wanted to buy. It is <laughs> oh? a spooky electronic instrument. No, you did not get <gasps> oh a fucking, oh, why am I blanking on the name right now? The theremin. I got a theremin. You got a theremin? I got the Moog Theremini, which I had always seen oh. online, and I assumed, oh, it's a mini theremin. It must be, like, really small. It's not. <laughs> it's still, like, a normal size theremin. It's just called that. And it, I guess it's a real theremin is, like, enormous, apparently. Like, they're super huge. But this is still, like, totally big enough. It's, like, the width of, like, a music stand. So, like, it's big and goofy, and I've already watched videos of old men telling me how to wow. calibrate it. And I'm so wow. fucking excited. Now, people listening probably don't know what the fuck a theremin is. It is in the song Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. <laughs> it's, it makes, basically, it makes music by creating a electromagnetic, electro sort of field. And the music is made when you disturb the field. So what it is, <laughs> and I tell me if I'm oh. right here, Keith, it's a rod, a metal rod uh -huh. in the air and you just put your hand in the air around it. And so you're it's like, like an L shape, right? So there's a, a metal rod and there's the base. And the ba at the end of the base, there's a, a receiver and there's an antenna as well. And there's and you tell it, though. Like when you turn it on, it's like, okay, here's the point that I've decided. You give it its boundaries. And even one of the points, you have to like hit a button and then run away from it. Because it needs to know what's around it besides you. Wow. So you're not like touching anything when you play. There's your... your Waving your hand through air. What? And uh -huh. that is disturbing the electromagnetic field that then yeah, creates cool. the spooky ghost Does it ghost feel noise. weird when no, your hand is like there? And I haven't gotten it yet. It'll come to me sometime next week when I won't have any time to play it. Yeah. And um, Becky's going to let you because that seems like sort of ghosty. So I, I, that's what the, the, the guest house is for all the weird instruments. So but, the guest but, house is my spooky Thing. And yes, it is very ghosty. Are you yeah. asking in the context of, you know, Becky is like not down with Ouija boards and you feel like this is kind of a cult yeah. adjacent? I think it's pretty close. <laughs> it's spooky, but no, it doesn't actually. Demons don't talk through it. We don't know that. We don't know that. But it is, you know, what I found out is the instrument was made in like 1920. What? Yeah. It's an old fucking instrument. And what I love about synthesizers and all those things is that they're all really old instruments that still feel like they're from the future. <laughs> And here's here's the idea. So like when you plug in an amp or a speaker, mm -hmm. there's a hum. Electricity innately has a sound to it. Uh-huh. And people were like, we could manipulate that <laughs> into music. And that's what uh, they did. That's inspiring. Yeah. I don't know that yeah. I know that the inventor has a crazy personal life story and he was in a Soviet prison for a while. Like he was a war prisoner whoa, and whoa. he was like wow. Uh, he and he talked to a bunch of demons and he wanted to replicate their voices. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was after he invented the instrument. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm trying to scroll. They probably thought he was like super fucking genius and like we got to steal him. He made the theremin. What else know, can you do? I have to read up on him. But yeah, he's got to <laughs> create the first alarm system. I also have huge news. Okay. <gasps> I Whoa. found a chair. <laughs> You need to give us more details. I found... Sorry, Rennie, we don't know the context. We have no context for what you're talking about. Keith, are you okay? <laughs> I... He's upset. <laughs> Rainy said she found a chair. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Now, Sorry, I... I just took a big swig of a drink for <laughs> what was a very confusing announcement followed by clapping. <laughs> clapping? Over her head. Clap? But what I liked I about the clapping sure. is one hand stayed high and then she had the other hand come yeah. meet it. <laughs> As opposed to, you know, normally your hands come together in a clap. She had one yeah, hand up. Part. Yeah. Um, so a couple guesses. Yeah. What this could mean. One, Rainy has back yeah. problems and has been looking for the right desk chair. <laughs> it's not that one. Okay. <laughs> Two, oh, she wow. found someone put a chair on the side of the road and she was like, oh yeah, you're That's coming home with me, baby. Mm -hmm. Three. Yeah, and now she has bed She bugs. has an <laughs> empty corner of her house that's been dying for a little book chair, a little reading <gasps> chair. And you finally found the perfect one. Um, that's so cute. And, um, <laughs> but that, no, it's the second one, but I am, Miles, I, <laughs> I am a little worried about the bed bug situation. Did you like, just look? 
Yeah, in a vacuum with my it? little handheld vacuum. <laughs> with oh, my little that's hand. Not <laughs> that's not enough for bed bugs. Well, right? actually, well, bed you bugs are pretty it, right? apparent. Yeah, but um, that is one yeah. of the reasons people toss furniture. Uh oh. Yeah, because yeah, those are nice. Tell me about this Man, chair. Randy, me, if you I'm brought a, bed I'm, bugs into the office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to text you they guys. They do travel on clothes. Photo. Um, it yeah. is. So essentially it's from like the tags. It's not the tags aren't still on it, but the um, there's it's from cost plus. So I looked it up. It's not really like on the website. I'm going to look up like the tracking cost number. Plus, first. World market. World market. We world love market. world market. Um, <laughs> And but I looked up the chairs there, and they're like three hundred, four hundred dollars. So I just found three hundred dollars. That's a good find. Yeah. Um, and it's a yeah. nice ass chair. And you know what? I'm sure whoever put it out there, this is exactly what they wanted to happen. And I'm sure uh, they're cosmically. Yeah, that's thrilled. true. I, yeah. I sometimes give put stuff out. It's like I just this doesn't fit in my house. I don't want to go through the yeah. effort of selling it for seventy bucks on right. Facebook. Yeah. So I'm just going to put it out and write free on it, and someone's going to take scoop it up, and it's yeah. going to change their life. You would you would put bed bugs, free and for right? sale <laughs> if you had you no, have like a, well you do uh, if you do free and for sale on okay. um, Facebook Marketplace you can find some good shit that's a decent chair you know what you can find for free <laughs> respectable chair right that yeah. shouldn't be free but you do have to go get it yourself pianos mm -hmm. people are just get don't want their pianos mm -hmm. and as I'm like I want it. your piano I don't have any place to put it either <laughs> <laughs> but I I want it and how I, many pianos do you have. I only have a keyboard and then I have okay. synthesizers, which are like little, like almost the same size as like an actual like computer keyboard, but they're little boxes, but technically they have keys. Rainy, I'm also noticing a big gulp of sunscreen in this <laughs> photo as well. Yeah, it's actually not sunscreen. It's after sun lotion. Wait, what is happening? There's there's sunscreen well, to the in right. In the photo that Rainy sent, there's also a big gulp of like lotion. And that underneath that, pump. okay. Yeah, underneath. Miles, you do you not protect yourself from the sun? I haven't worn sunscreen since 1990. You're fucking up, no, bro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do. I do wear sunscreen. You should wear it, but I don't wear it like on a day to day basis. Well, you're I wrong. Wear it, like, when I go to the, you're wrong. No, I know. I love that I'm you. About, I'm gonna age for it. Took this photo of your chair <laughs> earlier. Prior, the, oh, you yeah, were ready obviously. to send a photo of the chair. I sent this to my friend. I was like, look at this chair that I got. And he was like, wow. Oh, well, actually, what did yeah. he even say? Can we talk about over the chair? Rainy has this little hook situation. I love your little necklace hooks. Yeah, Thank she's so hanging up little necklaces. Her jewelry Thank you so hooks. Much. And also to the right is a red. And guess what that is? It's a red puffer skirt. Oh, I thought puffer, it was a puppy jacket. A puffer? Skirt? I know. It's really cool. I got it from uh, a hand-me-down from my mom's friend. Um, that's hella dope. I know. Cool. It is in LA and it's the summer, so I like have not really used it yet, but... Your drawers. It's... I know. I thought about... <laughs> <laughs> Your drawers are vomiting clothes. I know. <laughs> yeah, and Rainy, we're all, you we're all there. Look, like, I've got some drawers <laughs> that Rainy, don't close good. Rainy invited us in. We're like vampires. She invited us into her home by... <laughs> I'm definitely home. zooming in on the bottom, like, what's this? <laughs> what's I know, my thing thing on the right. bottom. My jar thing of um of masks with oh, the flowers on it. Oh, those masks. Mm -hmm. The okay. top has a feather. Yeah. Tell me about. There's this little cable, this wire underneath yeah. the chair. What's that going to? Thank you for asking. A heating yeah. pad. I. It doesn't work, and I. It is nailed <laughs> to the wall. Uh, ah, yeah, <laughs> it's an wow, extension cord. Wow. Wait, it's an extension cord yeah. that's nailed to the wall that doesn't work. Yeah. Cut it. Yeah, just guess that it <laughs> won't electrocute you. Cut it. Roll the dice. Cut, no, don't cut it. Don't cut it. Don't tell her to <laughs> no, cut, you're not cut cable. wires. Okay, okay. I cut Actually, wires all the time. It's going to be played yeah. in court. As long as you it's know that it, you have to know. You have to know. You have to know. It's not. Yeah. I, I'll and put tell you some a bold choice I made. gloves on if you're going to go for it. Okay, because they absorb well, speaking it. Speaking of the business yeah. of getting electrocuted, Zach, you had a great segment <laughs> today. I hate when you do that segue. <laughs> before he gets, before he gets, it, whenever you, wanna... you do it, it's like it's like. Speaking of Zach, you've got something, and it's going to entertain us, isn't it? <laughs> I just want you guys to know well, it's hey. possible. Often you guys just go, Miles, what's up today? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you're a producer. Like, oh, geez, I, you're in charge. That's true, and I've got it. I've got a list of stuff. But often, if we, the conversation's flowing, then I don't go. One more thing about the theorem is it might come on tour with Lou Berger. <gasps> That's fun. So it <gasps> might be something you can see the Luberger show. So that alone yeah. is like worth the ticket price to see a theremin play. If somebody pulled that out in a concert, I would be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, because it's like crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, we are <laughs> on tour first week of September. We're also going to San Francisco in like oh, a couple of weeks, but that's just a one and done. But then oh. the others we're going to be in Minnesota. We're going to be in Illinois. We're going to be in Ohio and Indianapolis. Got to say it. Indianapolis. So Woo. check us out. Come see the shows. They're so fun.
Are you okay? When I saw you do Wizard of Friendship, you did that the horn switcheroo during one of your songs. So I will be able to do that at a couple places. I'm okay. going to do that at Illinois State University, my alma mater, playing okay. Braden Auditorium. Huge. No, gonna, don't tell them where you're not doing it. Just look well, out. Yeah, for I'm doing them. it there because th- this is the school of music, which I also was a part of. So I'm going to reach out to them and get horns. I know they haven't promised me horns yet, but I'm like, how could they deny me <laughs> horns? <laughs> I want to see if they'll give me a sousaphone. Tell me if this is too much of a spoiler. We'll, we'll give it the old bleep. But basically, as you guys know, Keith has been spending his quarantine learning a lot of different instruments. Mm-hmm. And he has one song where he puts those skills to practice. Oh, yeah, we do a song. I mean, I, I think it's a, I don't know if we put it online. But yeah, I basically in one of the songs switch between four different horns it's in the duration hilarious. of the song. So I go from trombone to euphonium to trumpet to French horn. Just for fun. It's <laughs> exhilarating. It's fun. It's like, whoa, so many horns. And also like Alex does like a tap routine in the middle of it. It's just a cacophonous yeah. song. Huey plays like a million little percussion instruments. He juggles. We all do just a bunch of goofs and gags. Well, uh, don't be distracted by Keith's successes because today we're talking about failures. <laughs> today we're talking about <laughs> failure. Favorite topic. T- today we're talking about things that we've done. That didn't work out. It didn't work. But that doesn't actually mean that they're a failure. No. Failure is such a loaded word. Also, failure is good. Failure is great. Yeah. It you just, know what I think, you actually? You learn so much. Yeah. I think success and failure are invertly related or directly directly related. I think you have to, if you want to be successful, you have to fail like at least 400 times. Preach, Preach it. Yeah. Trainers. It's just a quota. You're just getting one failure out of the Preach way. Preach Rainers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> really good nickname. I'm going to tell my mom to use that. Rainers? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that's the rain, rainy stands? The Rainers. Raindrops Rainers. is what raindrops. somebody, I know. Somebody messaged me that. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The raindrops. Yeah. If you're a raindrop, give us a shout in the comments. Raindrop, drop, drop a little drop. raindrop em- em- emoji. You, you're right. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> bloop. <laughs> yeah, the raindrops splashing. Yeah, but so your so failure well, is good. So I'm part of why I, I've been looking for a time to bring this up. And since it's just us in the office today, I figure today, why not? I want to talk about my tea company, Zatico Tico. And I want to talk about why I'm really not doing it anymore. Uh, what went right and what went, went wrong with yeah, it. Yeah. And so I'm going to go? tell you the whole story because at this moment, you may or may not have noticed that uh, you probably haven't noticed because you don't notice things that aren't there. <laughs> I'm not promoting it. I'm not thinking about it. And if you went to Zatico.com, you would notice the URL doesn't even exist anymore. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so you work so hard to make that name. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I'd say the first failure is that every time someone asks me about it, I'll like do interviews still and they'll be like, so tell me about Zadeco. Zadaiko. And I'm oh, like, oh, okay. Well, dang. that means I chose a bad name, huh? Mm. <laughs> uh, but to, to tell you the story about this, it goes all the way back years and years ago to a YouTube event where Keith and I saw this talk and specifically uh, they, they were talking about alternative forms of merchandise. And we were kind of caught in this circle of you know, printing t-shirts and it felt kind of stagnant. And the idea was, why don't you take a product that you as a creator, are uniquely passionate and knowledgeable about and make that. And Keith was sitting there and he's like, I fucking love chicken. I should make a, I mean, will you tell I it? I think I was like, I should make food. Yeah. And it became very quickly apparent that that was going to be impossible. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> well, maybe I could make flavors. And then somehow I got into the idea that like hot sauces would be something good. And if I could make a hot sauce that actually wasn't all that hot that yeah. that would be something I would want. And also it came, it kind of came from like doing eat the menus and seeing that people were going to went out and bought the thing I recommended. And uh-huh. I was like, I don't need to right. be giving corporations free advertising. <laughs> yeah. I need to advertise my own product along with these free advertisements so that yeah. I get some <laughs> share of what I'm telling people to do. And also part, part of me felt bad that I was like directing people to go eat something that's not good for them. Yeah. So I made the the hot sauces and that, you know, took forever to find the person to match it with and figure out how to do it. And then we went and actually and like I met the person who makes it. So like I know that it's all like sources and it supports local farms. Like they're all from like small farms up in the northeast. There's a lady who makes it. She makes them all by herself. She's actually expanded her what? her facility. So cool. And and it largely wow. in part due to Keith's not too hot sauces, which is so <laughs> cool. And like it makes me feel great because I'm helping like all these little businesses. I'm also making money. Heatnist is getting like new people in. And also it's it is filling that gap of people who like hot sauces but just or like the flavors but can't actually enjoy them. 
If you value things like sustainability, cost transparency, and just doing the right thing overall, well then you should look into Everlane. Everlane is just fantastic clothing, but also they are made sustainably. They're gonna be open about what their money's going to. You're gonna feel good, you're gonna look good, and you're doing good for the world. What I love most about Everlane's approach to clothing is that they have a dedication to finding socially responsible factories. They do it through third-party audits with certified partners, so they're looking into their factories to make sure they are up to standard. I've got a lot of Everlane clothes, I've got their pants, but also just their basic tees. They're great to just mix into my wardrobe, put a cute jacket over it. You can never have too many good quality basics, and these are ones that I know are not gonna fall apart on me. So if you wanna do things differently from your core to your club, Closet shop Everlane. Go to everlane.com slash tryguys and sign up for 10% off your first order. That's 10% off your first order when you go to everlane.com slash tryguys and sign up Everlane. Helping people live their best lives with the least impact on the planet. And well, and there's so much really smart stuff at the core of this, right? Like you are a food nut and a fried chicken lover. Yeah. So you're like, I'm going to make a chicken sauce, mm -hmm. a sauce for chicken. That was the original yep. plan. And also you can't have, you like hot sauce, you like the flavor, but you can't have stuff that's too hot. So you were making something that you needed that you saw, yeah. but then also it was like, Hey, people know and trust that you have this opinion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and also like you are knowledgeable, you can make mm -hmm. a good version of this. Yeah. Right. So it really worked at the same time, that same weekend, we were thinking about like, what would mine be? And actually, I don't even think I had the idea for tea. I actually think it was maybe Keith's idea <laughs> where uh -oh. he, he was like, he was like, well, you love tea, man. And, and it was honestly not even something the audience knew, but just like I had switched because I needed a new caffeine source. Mm -hmm. I was always, I mean, there was a joke amongst us that makes it in videos. But again, the audience didn't know this. They're like, I was always carrying like three teas and four <laughs> different waters. And like, so that was where the idea sprung from. Now, you fast forward, Keith goes for it. He believes in this idea. And I'm like, I can't fucking do this. I don't believe in the <laughs> my ability to, to get this done. But he does it and he and it crushes. And we learn so much from it. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the launch of the hot sauce was really successful, like beyond our normal merch sales. And people were really excited about it. Um, and so it was like, wow, this could be a thing. Like, let's just not keep pushing t-shirts. Let's <laughs> let's make something make different. Yeah. Even though still, I'm lazy, and I was not going to do it. And I had no plans of doing it, really. I, I had talked about it until the pandemic hit. And so we, obviously, like everyone, had a lot of fears. We had fears for our health, but we also had fears for our company. We mm -hmm. were not sure how much money we were going to be making. Uh, if ad rates, you know, if we were going to be able to keep making videos, we were in lockdown at this time. If mm -hmm. our brand deals were going to dry up, if that means we weren't going to be able to keep on as big mm -hmm. of a staff... And Shopify, yeah. the e-commerce company, came to us and offered us a six-video branded deal, which is like fucking crazy. A crazy amount of videos it's to like want we, to buy. <laughs> that's We've never done that before. We've never done that since. And our agent at the time uh, was like, hey, this is great. Also, you've been talking about make, doing this tea. Two birds, one stone. Let's have them pay for you to make this series. And I was like, wow, this seems great. I yeah. can I can get this influx of brand dollars, which will help keep our company afloat. And it will give me something to distract myself from the incredible anxiety I'm feeling right now <laughs> um, and will give me a project and also seems cool. And then also Shopify pitched to me this like really kind of beautiful utopian ideal of a, a world made up of small businesses. I don't know if that's actually true in hindsight. I think that it's really just like new wolf sa or same wolf, new clothes, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they have a bunch of small businesses. And then this big thing at the top is going to make a lot of money. I do genu genu generally think that Shopify is a really cool product. And I liked their vision. Um, but they pitched to me this idea of can you make a business from your home with $500? And they were like, yes, you can. Here's how. Now, my agent at the time was like trying to push me as an entrepreneur influencer. And I'm like, bro, 
wrong guy. That's not that's not us. <laughs> that's certainly not like that's not Keith. It sure as shit isn't me. Yeah. Maybe it's Ned, but he's not doing like why didn't you ask him? And like I one, I'm the fuck I like making weird videos. I mm. don't understand business. You want to write horror scripts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole idea of being a boss makes me uncomfortable. I don't like asking our audience for money. It feels extra like extracting, mm -hmm. but I was like, cool, here's an opportunity. I don't know. I guess I drank the Kool-Aid. I was like, yeah, wow, there's all these ways that you can start a business from your home for $500 and we can start a revolution. I can show people. I quickly realized that I had won all of these unfair. So I'm talking now about the series that I made where I like that series, but I also kind of hate it because the whole premise <laughs> was I'm going to start a business at my home for $500. And a lot of people pointed out from the beginning correctly well, Zach, you also have like millions a of huge people. Huge platform. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're, that's true. But uh, the things that look, they said that you can do this, and theoretically you can. But obviously, I was working with unfair advantages. I was trying to be open about that. They also they wanted me to do it in real time, which felt really exciting. But then it got like really fucking scary. Um, Wait, what? Like scary? What do you mean? Well, just like hitting deadlines and like having to make it in real time and realizing yeah. that I was making mistakes in real time. Um, I mm. had this, this, well, here's one of my failures that I've never really gotten to talk about is that I thought it'd be really cool to do a fan art competition where when I sold my tea, I was going to have a bunch of fan art that I would then pay for. I would buy the fan art, turn it into sticker packs and just like for free include it with it. So mm. I was basically I, I, we have such an incredible pool of artists in the Try Guys community. I was like, I can commission their art yeah. and make it this like fun activation. So I put that call out. Now, at this point, I've already chosen Jessie, who designed my art. She's a really cool fan. She made it on Instagram, and I had already bought the Zadico design. But when I put that out into the world, people were like, Zach is trying to get free labor. He's trying to get people to... Um, yeah, art, he's, he's basically taking advantage of artists, yeah. which is a thing brands do. Yeah. Like any time you've ever seen, like even the Doritos crash, the Super Bowl competition is oh, literally yeah. taking advantage of people because it's way cheaper to give you prize money than mm -hmm. it is to pay for a real commercial. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and you also right. get yeah. a bunch of people making free native advertising that only goes on YouTube, uh -huh. but they share it with their friends. Yeah. So like it is a total racket anytime there's some sort of big company being like your design could be ours don't do it and i did it and you did it but you at least you were gonna pay them well that was my intention right but i was doing this in real time and so i told i i should also back up and say i was partnered with this company art of tea they're a really great tea company if you go to fancy restaurants or hotels all over the world you will see art of tea like their shit's mm -hmm. fucking bomb i'll talk more about them in a minute but i i went to them with this plan and they're like, you know, a recurring theme throughout all this was cost, especially during the pandemic. And they're like, well, it's going to cost X, Y, Z. This is not feasible. And what I thought would be like a really cool, cheap, fun thing that we could do is like, oh, this is prohibitively expensive for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so wow. I'm like, oh, not only can I not buy these designs, but two, I'm doing this in real time and I have an episode due next week. I got a million things of art. It doesn't make sense in the edit. People are yelling at me thinking I'm exploiting them. I've already chosen the artist. Let's cut it from the video and never talk about this again. And I regret that. I, I think that yeah. we have a history of when, when people get mad, there's that feeling that... Um, if you address it, you're going to make a bigger thing about it because uh -huh. now you're going to, people that didn't know about it are going to think. Right. I get that. I would kind of always prefer to just talk about it and yeah. like, you know, let people know what the intention was. I didn't do that. I regret it. I regret a lot of the stuff around this, right? So that's that's one failure <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that, I've, that I've now gotten off my chest. Um, the biggest thing that ended up happening, you know, look, I wanted to... I think that the the idea itself was always more niche than I realized because I, I was facing this uphill battle. Whereas the, what I think makes the hot sauce so good is that you are, it's a really low barrier of entry, mm -hmm. right? You, no matter what, you're, you're making food and you can put this condiment on top yeah, of it. Yeah, it's a condiment. At yeah. the end of the day, the reason, the big difference in our products is mine's a condiment and goes on top of something you're already eating or making it better. <laughs> it makes or it better. Makes it better or, or also makes something bad right. okay. Whereas tea 
is its own thing. Uh -huh. It happens in its own time and you often have tea by itself. You just have tea. Yep. Like maybe you have cookies, but like, <laughs> <laughs> right? tea Hopefully you but have you cookies. really just have a cup of tea and it, it requires labor to make it. You have, and I'm not a lot, but it's boiling water and stuff. Whereas hot sauce, you literally twist a cap, boop, pour out. Yep. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because you see my face every time and it's goofy and it's also a really easy gift. Yeah. That also, again, is a gift that someone only has to twist a cap. Like t giving your friend tea is like, especially loose sleeve tea is like, okay, now I also have to give them a steeper. Uh -huh. I've also, they have to know how to use a steeper yep. <laughs> and that the time matters. Now you're basically forcing someone to be a tea person. I'm giving them homework. <laughs> yeah, you're giving them like, this is a lifestyle change. Yeah, because I'm, I'm <laughs> one, I'm saying, hey, quit coffee and come over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there was another video that people got mad at where we did this caffeine taste test because I that was presented as it was just going to be a goofy taste test, but then it was actually about my tea and people mm -hmm. were like, this is false advertising. But it, I was like, I look, people are going to get sick of watching me just do tea stuff. Like, yeah, let me give you funny. a fun video in the middle of it. But people were just like, and you uh, got to see my skee ball machine that I'd made out of cardboard in that the pandemic. A good one. That you never you know I did fun. that, Rainy? No, I built, I built a ski ball dope. machine out of cardboard early out in the of pandemic. Cardboard? Uh huh. Like an almost full size. Did ski you ball still machine. have it? No, no it's cardboard. No, <laughs> I, I took it apart at some point. It was and fully and functional. He would roll it up and then it would come back down. It was very cool. Whoa, Keep yeah, so fucking. That's happy. really yeah. fun. Yeah. I, I just love making dumb little games. I want to do that. How hard yeah. was it? it? Took me a, a night or two. <gasps> I need that. We could do I, it I'm in the office. We can yeah. Like a, yeah. we can be, it would, uh, we should get a full, full, full four today's roller yeah. machine arcade. Office. Today's Just roller skate <gasps> day. Tomorrow we That's can do really cardboard fun. arcade day. Cardboard arcade. I leave tomorrow. We'll have to find a time. Yeah. We'll, we'll find a day and yeah. we'll do a craft yeah. day That's and I'll cool. show you guys I how I made crafts. how I made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I wanted to make a better product, right? I was like, I, from the beginning, it was like, let's get like good quality ingredients. We're going to do loose leaf tea because it's better. I had this idea of like giving people an ability to make like their own tea bags because like tea bags are really shitty for you guys. If you don't know, like there's what? Ton yeah. It's, Fuck. Tea bags are. I didn't know that. It's well, plastic it's, there's microplastics in it. You're like <sighs> ingesting a bunch of microplastics. The tea that you are drinking that's like in like your fucking Lipton's and whatever is like the like literally what they do. And this is in the tea videos when they make nice tea. There's like fucking shake that like falls onto the floor and I they sweep it, it up it. and Lipton put it in. Shit. It's just like it's not as good for you. Of course it is. It's yeah. not you're not getting the real tea experience. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But oh my gosh, I always yeah, like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm creating a product that is competing with 99 cent tea and it like really quickly became apparent like oh god this path that i've gone down again i'm doing this in real time and posting what i'm doing about it in real time i've created a product that by necessity has to be so much more expensive than i want it to be than what i want the audience that the, certainly what the audience wants i said from the beginning with this company i'm like hey we have to hit this number or like this i forget what it was it was maybe like ten dollars a bag or whatever and i'm like this we can't go over it or else this is unreasonable. And everything made it more. I wanted to include a steeper in, in the initial purchase, but there were uh, shipping delays because of the pandemic. You know, there, there's like not. Oh, remember the whole Suez Canal thing? Mm -hmm. We were all laughing about yeah. that. That fucked up shipping for the entire world. For the so, whole world. So now my tea was more expensive. Yeah. The, we were originally going to do tins, like collectible tins. That was impossible. So now we have to do bags and stickers. Uh, I wanted to do biodegradable bags. Those weren't possible. Those were going to come in eight months and they were going to be like so much more expensive. So it's like, okay, cool. And uh, now I'm just making garbage mm -hmm. uh, with fucking stickers yeah. that aren't biodegradable. Like everything I wanted to do, it was just like, can't do that. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. And I still at the end now am left with this product that is so much more expensive than I wanted it to be. And so now I know, okay, well, I'm asking the audience to buy really fucking fancy ass tea. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm at, and, right. and it's good quality product like do not get me wrong you're getting what you pay for anyone who bought Zatico I hope you enjoyed it um, I think it's really funny that people would get Keith's hot sauce and go like wow so much flavor and then they would try Zatico and be like oh yeah that's nice tea because <laughs> like tea is subtle. just different yeah, <laughs> tea is a different. subtle it's like a yeah uh, it's such a different product it's so <laughs> different uh, but it it is good and I don't want to say that the product is bad like I worked with Art of Tea they oh, are it's good tea genuinely the best in the business like 
the tea's fucking great and people who got like I still drink it every single day. I'm drinking it right now. The best thing that came from this is that I got a lifetime supply of tea. Uh, That's true. <laughs> I saved a lot yeah, of money. I've got so much hot sauce too. It's very funny. But like <laughs> I'll be there's hot sauce just it's like a joke. There's hot sauce under the bed in the guest house, <laughs> in the cabinets of the guest house kitchen, in the closet of Becky's office in our house. <laughs> in, 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 there's so like, much hot sauce. And then because I also get all the the dump the demo sauces. So mm-hmm. like sometimes the demo oh. sauces are good. They're really good. And they're like it took six sauces to make taco sauce. So I have taco right. sauce one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got like two, two to three bottles of each one. So when you get those little samples, are you like needs more lime? Yeah. Are you sort of like yeah. oh, so I, okay. I eat it uh, on a variety of different things. Uh-huh. I taste it uh, like by itself and I'll take I'll do it numerous days yeah. as well. And then uh-huh. I'll like, especially early in the process, I'll actually put it into little different like ramekins or dishes and add spices directly to it. Yeah. And see like, okay, oh. this might help. Oh. Like uh, we That's added better. like smoked paprika into something and that was like, that was a, okay, yeah. we need that. I think that went into like, the taco sauce maybe I don't yeah. know I, we just like you do a lot of and like squirting lime into it like it just is a little it's a little lab moment and then I send my feedback yeah. back and also Heatness is sending their feedback and Claire herself is thinking uh-huh. about what it needs to be probably the most fun part of this is like getting to taste stuff uh-huh. have an opinion about it get a new round of it and then also like the design process super fucking loved <laughs> I'm always also my first thing is less hot <laughs> and like they're always trying to send me hot sauces because they make hot sauce and they like spice. And the m- number one thing is like, it's too spicy. And it's like, yeah. well, it, it, I don't know. It, it, is it? And like, yes, the whole <laughs> point of these is that they're not too spicy. Not that spicy. If I can't and then eat you just made it, the hot one, right? Yeah, I made the hot one finally <gasps> with the hot chicken sauce. Oh. And I haven't had that. I want to have some. There's some here. It's too hot for me. <gasps> so I you couldn't even taste test it. I did taste test it, but okay. I did have to bring Becky and Huey over yeah. to taste test it. Yeah. And look, it's not as complicated, right? Because I'm just raising the heat, but we're trying to keep the same flavor. So uh-huh. I basically mm. just have to be like, does it taste the same? And is it hotter? And is it a pleasing yeah, amount of yeah. hot? Yeah. So like, it doesn't. It's right. not as much thought. Like, it only took like I think two rounds to make the hot chicken sauce. And we're gonna do right. the other sauces too. We're going to do hot taco and hot burger. Hot burger. Yeah. So those will come out hopefully for the holidays if we. And then Keith, was there, were there moments where you were like, I don't want to do this or was it smooth sailing? Um, it was pretty smooth. Um, the only thing that's difficult is that like, I kind of am customer service Mm. because it's my name and my face. So if somebody gets Uh a bottle that's broken, they're going to, tweet at me right. I had nothing to do with it <laughs> shipping to them but I will respond and like yeah. it, and I don't mind it it's, and very few of them break uh, but they do break they're glass bottles and they especially like yeah. during the pandemic there was so much shipping shit things were just getting tossed yeah, all it's, over it's the place fucking yeah. glass bottles. They broke. Right. Break. and but we always like immediately were like we'll give you a new one and yeah. pe- people would be like <laughs> or sometimes the, the worst thing that does happen is that it will break in a way where the it doesn't release the pressure of the bottle <gasps> And it like hairline fractures around the base. And then when they open it, 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 it oh, the bottom wow. falls out. And then chicken sauce oh, goes right. all over their floor and their, and their body. And awful. then I feel bad yeah. because I'm like, well, yeah, that it's sucks. still totally not my fault. No, not even Heatness's fault. It's just what happened. Yeah. Yeah. But it, right. it really is bad. I saw someone got chicken sauce all on their carpet. I'm like, well, I, hmm, I'm sorry <laughs> about that. I'm that really sucks. sorry. What do you do in that situation? <laughs> I just like tell, I just write to them like, hey, I'm so sorry this happened. Um, I tag Heatness in it. And they also normally see it. But you got to send them like 10 free bottles. Oh, yeah, we send them like a three pack. If, okay. if something like really bad happens we'll be yeah. like let's let's fix you up and get you right a new one and get yeah. you some extra bottles or um if we have like signed bottles still somewhere in the warehouse i'll make sure they send one of those to them i tell you what being a try guy we try some wild stuff we've eaten a lot of stuff we've consumed a lot of different stuff i did not realize that our job would entail us putting stuff in our mouths and bodies. What is the most wild thing that you can think of that you've had to eat? The balut, I'd say, was pretty high up there. The oh. the bird and the egg. The larva that we had to eat. The larva, which was, was like, really good. Well, no. well, the one that was hay, the that one, wasn't as like, good. Hay but, but some of the bugs were good. But there's stuff we won't try. Like, no. I'm not into 
skydiving. It's just something I'm not. I don't want to fall from really high heights. And something that I am not going to try is microplastics. I don't want that stuff in my body. They used to have like body scrubs and stuff that have microplastics. I've been trying to get all those out of my house. And then I didn't even realize there was a place that it might be in my house that I'd never thought of before, which is in my water. There is a ton of microplastics in your water. There wow. is a company that is trying to help get our microplastics out of our drinking water and it's life straw. And that's what we're talking about. Life straw. It's dope. Yeah, it says right here that the average person consumes a credit card's weight in plastic every week. Every week. Wow. Every single week. Think about how many credit cards. You could buy a lot of stuff <laughs> with, with the microplastics <laughs> in your body. Uh, if that, if it, it was only easy that easy to get proof for a credit card. Uh, you have to eat one. <laughs> yeah. Recent studies have emerged that show scientists have found microplastics not just in our stomachs, in our lungs and in our blood. <laughs> They're found in 93% of 11 popular water bottle brands around the world, which means people are selling water that has plastic in it. You know, it's in the tap water. 94% of U.S. tap water is contaminated with microplastics, and many water filters don't remove those things. The water filter you have at home is meant for taking out some of the metals or other things in the water, and it's not meant for these microplastics. These microplastics can be even finer than some of those minerals. <sighs> Yeah, it's pretty intense, but you can get a Life Straw home pitcher. Okay, I don't want these microplastics in and up or around my body. Tell me about this Life Straw home pitcher. All right, so we're going to do a little taste test because, you know, you know, sometimes you are staying in a hotel, right? You don't know how the water is going to be, even in your own house. In there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you live in L.A., it don't matter where you are. That tab water is not tasting good. But especially, I feel like the bathroom sink water has a bad reputation, <laughs> and I think it's earned that reputation correctly. I don't think it's good water. This is the men's bathroom. This is the grimiest water we got. I put it in the pitcher already, so I'm going to pour us both a glass. Me... Oh, yeah. Now this, because it's gone through the pitcher, we can be assured it is safe to drink. It's the only pitcher that removes microplastics, bacteria, PFAS, and more than 30 other common contaminants found in tap water. Okay. And we can take a little sip. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's And good. honestly, that tastes good. It tastes I'm, better than sink water should. LA has got some nasty tap water, and this is delicious. Pretty darn good. Let me tell you just a few more facts about the Life Straw Home Pitcher. It's got an award-winning sleek design that looks great wherever you keep it. It does look beautiful. I'm looking it's at a, it right now. It's a hot-looking pitcher. And the company, Life Straw, it gives back. So for every pitcher sold, a child in need receives a year of safe water. Say goodbye to your grimy old water filter pitcher and say goodbye to microplastics in your drinking water. Use code TRIPOD for 15% off the purchase of any Life Straw home product at lifestraw.com. I'm loving this water. So I'd say a shared success is that both of our launches were awesome. Really good. And like so fucking good. And I think it shows like like we got a really excitable fan base who mm -hmm. fucking loves us and wants to support us and and wanted mm -hmm. to get this product. And, and our thought and hope was that by following the process, they would feel part of it. Uh, Keith, you're sold out. And so I knew how many to get and mine still sold out. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And so like the launch was awesome. I forget how many numbers it was, but it was like, <laughs> holy shit, like this is so good. But then is the challenge of continuing sales and yeah it's hard now you have a company mm -hmm. keith you figured it out which is you have the most successful show on our channel right <laughs> well, I, it's second most successful but it is the most frequent uh it's once a month is eat the menu and i yeah. get to you know have a, and it has a really broad amount of advertising it's geared toward people who like to eat and to like so it really it's just a native fit it just makes sense uh and i don't even like I almost rarely even eat anything with the hot sauces on it in Eat The Menu now. But I just start each one. Hey, remember I have hot sauces. Uh, they're on the table the whole time. You see it the whole time. You think, oh, maybe I'll try that finally. It doesn't get feel, it. at least to me, like it just feels organic. Like, And it's part of like the tone of it of like, mm -hmm. and don't forget yeah. Keith's hot sauce. Like, it goofy. just fucking works. And I was like, well, I don't have anything to promote this in. <laughs> I don't have I don't have a regular show. I don't have an easy show. I like to make weird 
ch- stupid stuff that I make it too hard on myself and I make three episodes of candid competition every two years and <laughs> I, I have no way to promote this product that doesn't feel gross to me. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I'm now promoting it on my Instagram and like feeling like, so one, I also, I, I made an Instagram account. I hired someone to run it and she was doing a really great job, but at a certain point sales were dwindling and now I'm paying as much to run socials as I am to mm-hmm. keep it up. Yeah. And you're not yeah. like using this tea to build a brand in any arena. No, because right? you're of not the way... trying to be a, a food connoisseur or no. a tea an influencer <laughs> and the way that the bre- that the the uh it was set up with art of tea like the money going in was not building something it was just then going out yeah. to the people yeah. so like it wasn't like normally a company gets money and then you use that to hire people and you build and build and build this was more of like uh i don't know a fucking white label product and so i just don't like the feeling of asked asking our audience for money. Mm. I just fucking hate it. And I I think that the, this was like during the pandemic, I definitely was like reflecting on content by people like Bo Burnham who were just talking about like the mm. extrapolating mm-hmm. nature of the the creator fan relationship. And I also my agent was again trying to push me to be this entrepreneur. He wanted me to pitch a show where I was like a young entrepreneur helping other people start businesses and I'm like, "Who the what the fuck are you talking about?" And so, I guess long story short, and maybe I can wrap this up and we can talk about other failures, is <laughs> I just got to a point where I was like, I would rather spend my promotional clout on things that one are not asking the audience for money and two like are actually things I fucking care about. Mm-hmm. So I was like, like I, if you're going to ask them for money, you want them to buy yeah. tickets to a movie that you poured hundred percent right. or like, Hey, go listen to my podcast or the, like where right. I talk about movies. That's actually something that I've cared about my entire life yeah. or Hey, uh, like, or if I'm going to ask you to buy something, buy a product that has fucking better margins or, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but it's just like, I, it felt like I was, I didn't have the promotional clout to continue it. Yeah, I just got to a point where I didn't want to keep... I, it, okay, here's really what it is. I realized that a lot of people were buying it because they wanted to support me. Not because they are loose-leaf tea drinkers or not because they even thought... I mean, people got it and been like, oh, that was actually pretty good. But th- I, I could tell that there was a portion of the audience who got it just because they knew I cared about it. And I'm like, well, that's really nice, but I've made a very expensive product and I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to have to use your dollars to feel like you're supporting me in something I care about. I would rather you, I would, frankly, I want your attention. <laughs> I want your eyeballs <laughs> and your time. And then let's all take the brands, you know, let's let brands pay us and we can skip the ads and we'll take mm-hmm. their money. That's a good setup to me. Uh, <laughs> don't, then, don't skip the ads. Just, no, no, I'm I mean, just, of course, you guys uh, don't, don't do that. Don't skip would. the ads. No, 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 yeah. of course not. Yeah, right, right. But like, and then <laughs> when I have something that I really care about, like a movie or a TV show, now I will use that promotional power. I, I don't want to abuse that power, and I f- feel like inadvertently I did. And so that is why I consider it a failure. Not because it didn't do well. It did great. I learned a lot. I had fun. I got to design a product. Again, people like it. I'm like, don't want to s- disparage the product. We made a great product. Mm-hmm. It is still available. You can buy it on Art of Tea. This is the one and only time I'll give give one last ad for it. <laughs> But I'm not making any more. By my failure. Yeah, I'm not going to make any more. I'm done. Like, yeah. it, it became clear that I had to make new flavors just to have an excuse to launch something, just to remind people. And um, I'm over. I'm over it. That chapter of my life is done. And I, it's, it's, I think it's also a thing of learning when to cut your losses and realizing that the more I put into it, the less I was going mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. out of it. Yeah. And that it wasn't making me happy. So that's why See, I get to bring hot sauce to people's houses for like a barbecue and people go like, whoa, so cool. <laughs> it just it immediately gives people joy because it's so dumb. Yep. They love hot sauce. So they're excited immediately to, easy tr- to, to try it. And they're like, whoa, yeah. this is you on here. Well, and then they want to know how it all <laughs> happened. And it gets to be just a good conversation starter, especially if I don't know these people. Yeah, it gets a great way to just like talk about this. And then we can quickly get on to what favorite foods do we both like? And then we'll get on to 
not talking about my face on the <laughs> Well, we also had a thing where like, okay, even though we have different products, we're, we have the same pool of an audience. Mm -hmm. So like Keith and I were now, I was like, hey, Keith, you can't launch yours then because I'm launching mine then. And like, I was like asking him to move his launch dates in a way that I felt bad. And I'm like, honestly, I'm asking you to move. Like your product's fucking better. <laughs> like, let's just, why am I asking you to move out of the way? And so like, it just, it was too much. It's always hard to juggle products and vi even video releases and like the schedule. Oh my God. Calendars. Calendars. They look crazy. Calendars look crazy on our end. I don't know how your calendars look out there in the world audience, but our calendars look <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> Every time like crazy Becky or calendar. someone sees my calendar, like, how do you even read this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because I have like, I have the production one, which has like everybody's meetings. I have mine. I've got a Luberger calendar. I've got like the release calendar, the shoot calendar. Like there's so many calendars. Like every day has like eight colorful rectangles that on it overlap and, I, may, and one of them applies to me sometimes and sometimes they all apply to me i do hate like we have to put like ned dentist on our group calendar because yeah. if yeah. because our production like they're not able to check four different calendars in addition to our production in addition to our edit so like they won't check our personal calendar so we need to put our personal stuff yeah on the group calendar but now yeah. i'll get like oh, what do i have today Ned Dentist, I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> yes. It's like Ned Dentist starts in 10 minutes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. I hope Good it goes. To see. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of a social media. I'm not going to join with Google Meet. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> well, I talked a very long time about my failure, but it was a lot of stuff that I wanted to, you know, kind of close the door no, on. I think the audience about, probably so, enjoyed it. What failures do you, have you all had? Have I yeah, had? Yeah. Uh, I used what to. What failures? Uh, well, also, Zach, I. I appreciated that. I thought it was like very sincere and interesting. Yeah. And also I think it's like, because you're talking about it, I'm like, okay, like it's okay. You know, if you, if you didn't, and it's if okay. I was just sort of like thinking about it as if like, you know, as a viewer or something, I'd be like, hmm. But I think since you're acknowledging it, I'm like, uh, it feels very productive to me to sort of have, um, have learned all that, you know? Sure. Well, it was tough yeah. at the time too because uh, people, again, like were getting mad at the episodes as they yeah. went on because everything I, there was the art thing, there was the the caffeine taste right. test. And so as the episodes went on, people were like, fuck this series. And I'm like, we've already sold six of them. And I did it because <laughs> I wanted to keep people employed and I'm mm -hmm. trying this course right. correct, but you're already mad and I get it. Yeah. And I'm in a, I'm in a brand yeah, deal. And they're and seeing I, like, this is a sponsor video that they want me to buy something <laughs> from. There's two different, <laughs> Different sponsored. Yeah. There's two different brands happening here, and both of them want my attention. And it's, but I'm it also feels I'm in the middle of a brand deal, so I can't even like talk openly or can't no. like about how I'm like. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of shitty, and I fucked up. But keep going because we. <laughs> yeah. So it was just like I just had to yeah. fucking eat it. Just had to eat the shit. The price thing is interesting too, because like I think that there is nothing. It's hard. It's almost like specific types of audiences because if they're like, there are tech YouTubers that sell products that are wildly expensive. Oh, yeah. But yeah. like because of but because of their audience, that audience is used to paying a premium sure, yeah. for different products. Like there's a YouTuber I really like who sold. He does like camera stuff. And he was selling ND filters that were like, you know, variable ND filters that were really great and had his branding and stuff all over them. And they were really expensive, but no one better than I because if you're buying film equipment, you're buying something that's the expensive. Cheap ND People who like buy tea, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like so, it's like then paying 150 or whatever is like, oh yeah, that makes sense, but. For a tea, people who really like tea probably are spending a lot of money on tea, yeah. but our audience is not that demographic. Yeah. yeah, and they are, but I will say like there are really wonderful teas that are cheaper than mine, and they're able to be cheaper because yeah. they're they're yeah. making more. They have their cases and their printing art. Like every right. cost was startup cost. I mean, look, if I wanted to do this in a way that would have push more is I would have done it the way everyone does their coffee company. I just would have made really shitty cheap tea. <laughs> I would have yeah. just done or, tea or bags. Or like literally find one that's already made and simply put my name on it. Put your sticker yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's Chamberlain Coffee. It's like a brilliant fucking it's just a coffee company and it's in a different bag. I'm yeah. sure it's good. Yeah. I haven't tried it. I, it's I great coffee. Yeah. It's great. I just said I've shitty and then you brought that up Chamberlain. So I don't want to despair. No, I mean, that's, no, 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 that's no. not a I think bad that's way a good to, example. to move a product but it doesn't mean right. that like the difference in that and like my hot sauce or the tea yeah. is that we engineered right. them. Like Your hot exactly, sauce especially right. is Did like I actually mix up burger sauce ever? No. I never boiled down a pot of burger sauce. I did not make <laughs> it. Like that's how you make it. You, you boil like vinegar and a bunch of shit together and that's how you do it. I yeah. didn't do that. But I was 
I said, I want to make a smoky mustard sauce for burgers. I, I think it should have these things in it. I gave that to someone and right. I think, I think it should have these things in it. I'm like, cool. Then we go back and forth. So I'm like very involved in designing the flavor, but no, I'm right. not making the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. And like, but it, that is so much more than even like the people who are like, I have a coffee. It's really, they just found a coffee. They like, it's a company that has do probably done this with someone else before. And like, look, we can put your face on it. We can cut you in it like a, you know, 30 to 50% revenue of the set, the ones that sell through your link. And you're also putting the price probably double because yeah. now it has your face on it. And then everyone right. makes money. Everybody wins. Um, the audience is still getting delicious coffee. So they're not upset, but it's not going to have you coming back to buy more. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. the hot sauce, I think effectively does do that. that it's people, also such a unique flavor. They're unique flavors. They're fun. They're great gifts. They, I don't know, bring people joy in mm -hmm. a bunch of different ways mm -hmm. of like that it's reliable. And I think it's, it. I, I really like it because it is some a flavor I designed that I want. And I started doing this because I wanted to make food. Food is really just making a flavor that someone else can enjoy. And I think it's really cool mm -hmm. that people get to eat something that I designed. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super fun. There's something yeah. very like mm -hmm. seeing someone ingest something that you <laughs> made is uh -huh. like, that's a whole nother. <laughs> it's wild. It's crazy. What? Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, so I'm sure you've had something in your life where you had to acknowledge, like, I've put work and effort into this, mm -hmm. but it no longer is feasible, and here's why. Y'all know I love CBD, but it's not uncommon to take a new CBD product and wonder, is it even doing anything? Is it working? And you're not gonna have to think about that with Next Evo Naturals. They've developed smart sorb technology that is clinically proven to help your body absorb CBD four times better than regular CBD oil. They send us a bunch over here. They've got supplements, they've got mints, they've got supplements that have melatonin in them for sleepy time. I've been taking them. It's just a nice, easy way to take your CBD. I've really been enjoying their product. I take CBD. CBD every single day, both at night, but sometimes during the day. And their products are just, they're fast acting and they're simple. Next Evo's smart sorb technology means that you're absorbing CBD faster. It's going to get into your system in as little as 10 minutes and you're not wasting CBD. Stop wondering if CBD is right for you. Try Next Evo natural capsules, gummies, mints, and topical creams clinically proven to be better absorbed by your body. Get 25% off your first order of 40 bucks or more at nextevo.com with promo code TRYGUYS. That's 25% off at nextevo.com. Promo code TRYGUYS. Improv comedy. Can't do it anymore. I don't have time for you it. You can't do it anymore? I don't have time for it. And I, this job? actually is yeah. a slightly different thing. It's like there's only so much time I have left for hobbies or, bus dying? or businesses. Uh -huh. No, in the week, like <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, on a day. A like, this isn't I, failure. This is learning when it's okay to cut cut your losses yeah, or I, cut out. And I was right. like in uh, multiple improv companies, but we had made one called Octavarius. Uh, it even was so nefarious. <laughs> we made it all the way to LA where we were still doing shows. We were doing touring shows for colleges and we were like, had a, a we had a website back in the day. We had like a YouTube channel. Which, we were as like, Miles would say, websites are cool. Cool yeah. than that. We had, we had, cool, we did a hundred episodes of a podcast. Like wow, we I were, didn't know that. yeah, a long <laughs> wow. time ago. And um, we like were putting up shows and we really were a business in Chicago, but it was not like super lucrative, but it really was like all the money it made, it just went right back into the product. And then we right. moved out here and had to get a California business license, which is like super expensive. And we just weren't generating income. And at some point we had to be like, well, we have to uh, close the business. And I never even thought about like, oh yeah, we opened a business. You have to close a business. You have to say, uh. this business doesn't exist anymore. We don't uh. pay taxes anymore. There's no money. It's over. We no longer have a business license. And you have to mm -hmm. like have tax forms that say, we're closed. We closed the business this year. And it was like a weird thing because it was something that in, for my life had existed for six years. And it was like, I pour so much work into it. Mm -hmm. I, it's what taught me in editing and video production. All the things I made for Octavarius were like all my first projects of ever making anything for the internet. So like to mm -hmm. let it be like, okay, it's done. Uh, was like, a, oh yeah. But it also was kind of like, oh, well, we all, we all kind of had moved on from it. We didn't have time to do it, but it was sad. That's because yeah, it was like mm -hmm. our first company and it really by the end of it it was just brian mark and i yeah uh, and we're probably st still the only members of it if it were to exist but we had to close it down and mark was like 
oh yeah, we, it was just like <laughs> costing us money to have it. I'm like, mm, yeah, then we should get rid of it. There's no yeah, reason to right. have it. Just I have for, not actually uh, closed my business license for Zatico, so I'm sure that'll be an emotional day. Yeah, you'll have day. to do that <laughs> at some point. Um, but yeah, but it was like, but I don't know, you have to like kind of let things go. And improv comedy for me is like something I don't do anymore because it takes so much time. It's like we just did a, the, we'll have the video come out, the stand-up video come out. And I love doing stand-up mm -hmm. comedy. It was so fun. I don't have time for that. No, I don't have time. Oh, I can't put myself grind. in a whole yeah. new culture of performing. I, I barely have time to play synthesizers. <laughs> <laughs> I have like all these cool music making machines in my house. I barely have time to do it. And also like have a life with my wife and this company right. and Lou Berger going on tour. Like when am I going to do all the things I want to do? So you just have to accept that something that once brought you joy, mm. it, you don't have room for it anymore. I feared getting to this place when I was younger of of being less hungry, and I find that you I'm fear it. I feared it when I was I'm younger. Desperate to be less hungry. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell I you, I'm here. Stop. Now. Yeah. Well, tell me why, Randy. Well, no, I want to hear about I because I'm tired. <laughs> I want to be in my little mansion with all my little like you know foster kids and foster dogs, you know, <laughs> and just foster kids done. and foster dogs. That's fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, Rainy fucking gets it. I'll tell you that I'm I'm here now, and I find myself less hungry, and I am grateful for it. It's mm -hmm. it's nice to get to a place where you are happy to just be, mm -hmm. to be in the moment, and not be pining mm -hmm. for what you're not for what you could be. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that I've abandoned certain dreams. I think it's just, as you said, being more realistic about it uh -huh. and not trying to do stuff to... I, I think a lot of what motivated me as a creative person when I was younger was external approval and thinking that, one, yes, mm -hmm. I love the process of creating, but also I needed to create to get to X so that I would be showered in accolades and right. people would acknowledge he is a good creator <laughs> and now i'm i'm much ha like i'm really just looking for to carve out the spaces to do the things i enjoy in the timeline that it takes mm -hmm. and i don't i'm not going to pull all-nighters or uh you know not take vacations whatever to get xyz done because that means i'm now not living <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. just not worth it mm -hmm. um, yeah <laughs> and, and i i'm happy to be there finally and it's still i'm still learning it i'm sure i'll ebb and flow but it's a, it's a nice yeah. feeling it's also like there's time you know to do other things eventually still oh you yeah know? Like, you guys are young don't have to do it all yeah. right now I'll yeah be able to play with my synthesizers in 25 years maybe and really figure it out <laughs> i think that a lot of the people that we worship in like celebrity culture or creator culture or whatever are miserable people <laughs> and oh, I, yeah, or they don't live their own lives they're living a <laughs> life someone else plans out on their calendar for them mm. and it's you know? just like the the people that mm. we're saying like wow that dude's fucking crushing it hustle culture like i saw this article or this headline that was like jason momoa and fucking girlfriend split <laughs> because while they really like each other, their schedules are too demanding to make it work right now. And I'm uh, like, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah. That, your life sucks. Yeah, that You're, sucks. And like, no offense, Jason Momoa, you seem like a cool guy. I don't mean to single you out. Yeah. It's all celebrities. Like, if you are too successful and you're fucking hustling and making movies, you're too successful to have a relationship? Your life yeah. sucks. We shouldn't be worshiping you. You suck. Unless, <laughs> un unless you were to say, I prefer my relationship with creating art over a relationship with another person. And that I think is okay. I think mm. there are people who are that way and I think that's okay. But I think if you want a relationship with a person and you find that you can't have it because of your career, that's an, that's an issue because you're depriving yourself of like a very natural desire that humans have because that's how humans work. Yeah. My mm. hunch is that we're just, we're idolizing the wrong things and that most people when push comes to shove, would and should prioritize like human to human connection because I hate to break it to you, that's all we fucking have. Mm -hmm. You you're born and then you die. There is no afterlife. Uh, nothing oh. that you <laughs> nothing that you accomplish fucking matters. You at least can't live your life <laughs> looking toward the afterlife as the thing that'll oh, be yeah. the best the, part of it. The like, future yeah. doesn't exist. You and don't it's know not about fucking it. guaranteed. Don't work for the future. Live right the fuck now because it's all day. you fucking have. 
Before what do you think? Oh, wow. So you listen to that Mad Men TikTok clip, huh? I didn't You no, listen didn't to that Mad Men TikTok clip? <laughs> I didn't. And you, I never, sort of, I didn't. you really loved that? I didn't. Well, I don't, I didn't. <laughs> He's like, you're born and then you die. And then. I don't yeah, want. I didn't watch it. Mad Men. But, um, I swear to God, I didn't see that. But I love. Was it Was it fucking John Hamm? Am I reading it? Am I doing a John Hammism? Yeah, he goes, you're born and then you die. He's like, I'm not living for tomorrow because there isn't one. And he needs to get Fuck this old yeah, thing. Did I just baby. fucking um, write Mad Men? I Am guess I Matthew you did. Wiener? I guess you did. Hey, you know what? Maybe you're thinking about starting a company. And maybe you're thinking about how you're going to die one day. <laughs> maybe you're just thinking about how you wish you had a little more time for something. Well, we don't have advice for that. But we do have advice for something else. Probably a snack. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are for snack time. <laughs> and for your best snack time or relax <laughs> relaxation time advice, we got a boy for you. His name is Miles. His advice will go for Miles with Miles at Ponsignore. It's advice that'll go for miles. Tune into your radio station. It's advice that'll go for miles. Everyone get ready, Miles Nation. Miles Nation, go. It's advice that'll go for miles. Advice that'll go for miles. Forget everything you know about waking up. <laughs> Okay. Drink water. I always, want, I always wonder okay. how I look when I wake so up. So don't even try to fucking pretend about it. Don't even try to fucking do it. Because have you ever wanted your day to start off like a fucking amazing little day? Yeah. What <laughs> snack should I have? Have you ever wanted your morning to be like ba da 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 <laughs> Dip celery in peanut butter. Don't ask yourself breakfast the night before. <laughs> take a little trip. Take a little trip. Take a little trip of that outdoor air. Yeah. I'm telling you to go outside. Mm. First thing you wake up, I want you to. <laughs> Couldn't disagree more. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> wake up. You're in your bed, Couldn't right? Couldn't disagree more. Uh-oh. <laughs> Someone's sleeping. Where are you? And then you go, Ooh, I'm woken up. And then I want you to go outside and take a big gulp of that fresh little air. It's so hot okay? outside right because now. Because that's what's going to be the Not thing. The that, yeah, shut up, Keith. It is. This it is. Be the thing it is. It was really hot this morning. I walked shut outside up, and it was so fucking yeah. hot. Yes. Not in the morning. Not in the morning. It was. Not in the fucking morning. It was morning. You're going to wake really, up really and you're going to take a big gulp of air because that's what's going to re reserve you. Well, what? You go on TikTok. You go on TikTok, Twitter. You get all this medical anxiety and you're like, uh, I'm worried about what I'm going to die. But no way, man. You got to go out Outside and drink in that sweet, sweet uh, O2. Man, the air in <laughs> LA is really bad. But I will say, if you go take a little sip, that's gonna and do a little downward facing dog, just mm, first ass thing. Yes. Don't go on internet, <laughs> don't go on MySpace. Go outside and take a breath because that's the ever. thing that's because at the end of the day, as Zach said, there's no afterlife and we're all going to die alone. Hell yeah, It was very bleak what he you said. You could but, die together. I want you to go outside. <laughs> like a game of I want you to take situation. a breath. Yeah, I didn't say you would die and alone, I, but you will die. And I want you to... Tomorrow's not promised. I want you to take a deep breath. And then that's going to get you the relaxation. It's going to make you feel good about positive thoughts. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love this. Yeah, I think it does work better in Denver or, you know, <laughs> Vermont right now. Maybe not Vermont. Denver? Yes. Yeah. Where is yeah. that? Denver's Chris. <laughs> Miles. What if you would, if you imagine someone in Miami waking up and going outside and just be awful. <laughs> just be the worst like, thing oh. to start your day with. Just the humidity of August. Smacking you. <laughs> no, August enjoy Miami. the heat. Sweat from all Are your you pores, man. Crazy? Sweat from your pores. Sauna? The creativity is going to be bursting out of your fucking... It's Holes. No, I, I love this advice, Miles. What I've been trying to do lately is I, I take my morning tea earlier than I want to wake up and I go mm -hmm. and I sit outside while my dog takes a shit and I sit in my backyard Beautiful. and I listen to the birds. Ooh. Yeah. And I realize that a lot of what we think is pretty bird songs is actually birds screaming, somebody fuck me. Yeah, that's true. And then the, yeah. the little other birds like, I don't want to. And then he gets closer. And he's just like, come on, come on. But it's beautiful to listen to. Most of it is either it's cat somebody calling. fuck me or <laughs> I'm scary. Don't even come near don't me. Don't even come near me. I'm, yeah. I'm scary. In case you're thinking about come. flying over here, I'm scary. Squaw, squaw, don't squaw. even come yeah. near me. Don't come over here. I always have like little conversations that the birds say, like as they're talking, like they'll, you know, but it's not really fuck me. It's like, um, it's like, 
how was the weather today, Steve? Like, you know, like stuff like that. And then there's like an annoying little kid who's like, rah, 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 rah. That's uh-huh. what I think yeah. whenever I go outside. Yeah. Raindrop <laughs> sound off in the comments. Rain you drops. also have weird conversations. Sorry, drop, 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 drop. What the hell was that? I don't know. I want us to not address it. I want us to drop, move drop. on as if it was normal. I want us just to <laughs> pretend that, that was totally normal for her to what? say. What? Every what part of it was like, totally normal. She, what, what it's was very she talking relatable. About? There's no questions <laughs> to ask. Raindrop. It, it makes sense to me. You sometimes there's an annoying little kid bird or something. And you voice them. I get it. Hey, Steve, how's the weather? I got to pee again because I'm still drinking this gigantic thermos. But breathe in that air. Mm-hmm. Ask Steve how the weather is. And you know what? That may help you realize that now is all you have. Wow. Live in the moment. Thanks for joining us on today's beautiful day. Don't be afraid of your failures. Failures are inevitable. Mm-hmm. Just learn from them. That's the best thing you can do. Bye, Miles. Bye, Miles. <laughs> Miles just died on our end, so oh. I guess that's it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Go get yourself. That's me. It's telling me I have a call soon in oh, three yeah. minutes, and I well, have to pee, so I gotta go. Stick around for the after pod. We're gonna we're gonna just hear what's going on with Rainy. Okay. Yeah, we want her to tell us more yes. about her bird conversation. In my chair. Yeah, in your chair. Yeah. But till next time, Keith. His with the official tripod theme song. Oh, you already know it. You're going outside to talk to some birds. Hey, Little Steve, baby birds how's are it going? Outside. You're not telling them to fuck you. You're asking them to have a conversation. Is the tripod? The kids annoying. Yeah, that's exactly. Stay beautiful. Stay beautiful. <laughs>